Hi, I'm master plumber Ed Del Grande, and along with my friend and assistant Charlie, we're going to show you some of the key steps for installing the Sterling Lawson bath. Before getting started, you should read the installation guide and follow all cautions and notices, and of course, you should comply with your local codes. For our demonstration, we'll be installing the Lawson in an alcove, but you can also install this bath in a drop-in setting or an island. The rough-in dimensions are found in the installation guide, along with the list of the tools and materials you'll need. As you can see, we've completed the rough-in of the alcove, including cutting an opening in the floor for our drain and the rough plumbing. Now, let me point out something that's very important here. Our mixing valve and filler is mounted on the wall. Now, your design may call for a deck or rim-mounted faucet, so if that's the case, consult the installation guide for the proper way to accomplish this. Now, before we install the bath, there's one more bit of roughing in that we need to complete, and that's the installation of our ledger strips. Getting them in the right place involves some careful measuring. As you can see, we have the bath out of the box, and we've put down a large pad to protect it from damage while we're handling it. First, we'll dry fit the bath into the alcove to make sure everything is square and level. Ready, Charlie? We'll check level on all sides and we'll make sure that the bath is resting on the subfloor without rocking. If you have to level the bath, the installation guide gives you instructions on how to use shims or a mortar cement bed to achieve a perfectly level installation. If a felt pad is included with your product, be sure to install it between the subfloor and the bath. You'll find more information in the installation guide. The bath seems to be level, so we're ready to measure for the ledges. Charlie's marking the height of the bath flange on all the studs. You all set, Charlie? Okay, let's remove the tub. Now, We'll measure 1 and 9 16 inches or 40 millimeters below our bath flange marks. This is where we'll install our ledgers. There you go. We've pre-cut the ledger strips to fit the alcove. So now we'll install them on the marks, making sure they're level. Let's check our work. We've moved the bath back into the alcove, and now we'll check for level one final time. Thanks. Remember, the bath should be supported by the subfloor and should not be suspended from the ledges. It looks like uh, we've done a pretty good job, so now we can move on to attaching the apron. The apron right here, this will fit on either side of the bath. So, we use the drain hole as a guide to determine what side of the bath we want to install the apron on, and we've turned the bath upside down on the protective pad. We're installing the apron that has access panels, but there is a standard apron available as well. All right, right here, these alignment tabs on the top, they make the job really easy. What we'll do is we'll align the tabs with the slots on the underside of the rim and then we'll snap it into place. If this proves a little difficult, you can always use a little persuader like a rubber mallet to gently tap the apron tabs into the slots. Now we'll take the apron braces and use them to secure the apron onto the bath. Okay. We turned the bath over and installed the drain and overflow according to the manufacturer's instructions. We've also positioned the bath back into the alcove. At this point, the bath should be level with all the feet firmly on the subfloor or supported by a mortar base or with shims. Let's check level one last time. Charlie, how we looking there, pal? Good. Good, okay, that's perfect. And now we'll position these clips at the stud locations. Notice that the clips fit between the flange and the stud with the tab over the flange. If there's more than an eighth of an inch between the clip and the stud, use a shim to fill the gap. 
You can use roofing nails or non-tapered flathead screws to secure the clips to the studs. Now, I'm going to use screws because I don't want to accidentally damage the bath if I miss my target with the hammer. Okay, we've secured the bath in place, so we're ready for the finished wall material. We've installed water-resistant wall material onto the studs to show you how the finished wall will meet the bath. Now, look at this. We left the gap of about a quarter inch between the wall material and the surface of the bath. Be sure to seal this gap properly. After the water-resistant wall material is in place, we'll install the finished wall material, in our case, tile. Here, we'll leave about an eighth of an inch between the bottom of the tile and the surface of the bath. Looks good. To finish off the wall installation, we'll put a bead of 100% silicone sealant between the bath and the tile. The final step is to complete the drain, faucet, and trim installation. Now, we've demonstrated using the five foot Lawson bath but this unit is also available in a six foot model that doesn't use an apron. And while we've demonstrated with an alcove installation, the Lawson also works great for drop-in or island installations. All the information you need is in the installation guide and for even more detailed information and installation ideas, check out sterlingplumbing.com. Thanks for watching.